Well, it is uh, uh, one hour and 17 minutes into the 22nd day of July, and we were still within our transition period the last time we got up. Uh, and this is kind of how things go. Just like I thought I'd sort of vlog at this point. I got myself some cereal, and I'm going to have milk tea with the cereal. This is how things go. I'm offloading the, the, the new addition to the storage, uh, storage network is working well, well, and so I'm transferring a, a fair bit of data, uh, because it's, I've got two, two terabytes worth of data storage there. Uh, so I'm offloading some data to that. I'll, I'll actually a good chunk of data. And while the computer's doing that, it's, it's, it's in the process of transferring, uh, and to one system, then I'll transfer from the, from the main system to the uh, hard drive. <coughs> That's the most stable way of doing it, without losing any data. Um, I'm sitting down and doing, uh, 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 I'm on the uh, sub-path of uh, uh, the Yowie vlogs uh, called Good Bits. And they're uh, heading out, they're uh, on a trip to uh, Yellowstone National Park. And... I got to see places that I don't ne wouldn't necessarily be going to, uh, uh, because of the good size screen I have. It's like, it's like an 80 inch screen, and so I get to travel places. But so I just thought I'd pop in here at this point in time and sort of add that little bit in and uh, uh, move on to uh, uh, some one of my dinner or whatever it is. I don't feel like having anything like a burger or anything like that at this time. So I'm having uh, cereal and milk. Well, it is uh, two hours and 33 minutes. I'm kind of late <laughs> uh, into the uh, 26th, 22nd day of J July. Oh, um, we transferred 30 gigabytes of uh, files to the uh, new storage system. Um, that's the first part was done. Now I do do a second part, so that's doing that right now. And I just visited uh, Yellowstone National Park and saw some nice RV videos as they were going along. They were in uh, the Florida Keys. So uh, I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, I've got I've got to do one more thing on gaming that I've got to quickly go and check, and then uh, I'll be transitioning to bed and seeing uh, sort of what's going to pop up tonight or in a few hours on, uh, in, in that se section in that uh, session of our work well we are uh, one hour and 17 minutes into the uh, July and 20, 23rd uh, transition so uh, we're at another transition point my camera died on the way home uh, so we were talking about, mm, it's sort of the nature of the world the way it currently is, but it's not, it's, it's always been like that. <sighs> most people are unaware of what's actually happening, in other words. Most people are happily within the herd, they are behaving like a herd of animals. Uh, this is what, uh, uh, Sigmund Freud rec uh, recognized. His nephew, Edward Bernays, took this and created what's called PR, the sort of the uh, engineered consent that we see in the modern world today. But also, Anna Freud uh, worked with FDR to really sort of uh, uh, I should say Anna, Anna Freud was employed by FDR to really shape what they call the modern era. The so-called status of normal normal was actually phrased and sort of put together by Anna Freud in, in order to in order to prevent people from coming wild animals. And of course, people like Timothy Leary and uh, Ram Dass kind of laughed at it and said, "Oh no, you don't have to be normal. You can be anything you want to be, and, and, and it will be okay." And these be experiments began in the seventies, sort of these psychedelic psychedelic. Expansion of the mind, but there was a number. It wasn't just simply uh, 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 using uh, LSD and uh, psilocybin, which is basically mushrooms. Uh, it was there were also sort of 
uh, therapeutic techniques, uh, psychotherapy that have involved uh, to achieve this as well. And a lot, this is where you have a lot of your self-help gurus coming out of it. You have a lot of different workshops coming out of it. All to teach this new thing of living for yourself, uh, self-love. And this is where Anthony Robbins comes in and all these so-called motivational speakers. And it produces kind of the world we're living in today where where nothing really seems to matter. And what's happened, once again, is that the the the... The ugliness of the wild person of of the mob mob rule uh, has really come back into play again. And, and I say before is that you know uh, people say, "Oh, I'm not really religious," but the, really, are is that the case? You are not religious. What is it you don't believe in? And if it's just about God, then that doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you're not religious. I mean, do you believe? in environmental causes and uh, are you you know following the religion of recycling and the so-called the eco world if you're doing that you're in a religion because there's no proof of of, of what they have what they this is these are simply political talking points which uh, as i pointed out to my parents it comes and my dad agreed my mom doesn't didn't really understand didn't really agree with it but then after she thought about it realized that's what was happening that there is no political thought that is separated from theology. Every, every political thought, every political action comes from some degree of theology. And so it, in, in many ways, is a form of religion. Even if there is no stated God there, uh, the, a religion still forms because you still have rules and that, that the government wants you to follow. And they expect you to behave and behave as if it was, if you were any religion, that you would behave dutifully as a, 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 a sort of a member of that uh, religion. So you have the Canadian cult religion, you have uh, the indigenous cult religion, also produced by the Canadians as well. Uh, this, you see the, the Dutch and Trudeau's, they have, they have an indigenous cult, they have, it's not like, again, it have, it's like BLM or anything else, or Antifa. These things aren't uh, specifically to the groups themselves, but rather they're a religion, they're, they're a way of corralling a group of people into a functional identity. Uh, uh, apparently these people need labels, you know, everything has to be labeled. These are people, you know, there are people who have an OCD that everything has to be labeled and the labels have to be ordered and lined up. Well, this is who these LGBTQ people are. This is BLM, this is this, and the governments that form these things uh, also have this belief as well. And this is what you see with the environment. This is what you see with CVD. It's about belief. It's not about the actual work. And even in science, a large chunk of your science has to do with belief rather than anything else. Uh, and so the, the, the observational techniques have gone this way. I've gone back into data because data allows you to shape the information so that it matches your belief. And this is what they're doing. They're matching the data to make to, to make sure that it 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 conforms to their beliefs, and so this is not science. This is religion. So, uh, not specifically about God, but it's religion nonetheless. So these people are religious, and if you want to call them religious nuts, that, that that's what you can do because they are there are people out there who are religious nuts, regardless of what the religion is, <laughs> and so. The question is now, if this is the situation that we are living in a society of religious nuts, and this religion can be anything you want to be, but of course, as long as they approve of it, you know, as long as the liberals and Democrats approve of what's going on, uh, then you're okay. If they don't approve, in other words, you're not within their religious spectrum, then you're not okay, and you pose a threat to them, you pose a threat to society, and this is where you become hateful. You, this is now what they call a hate crime. Simply to think outside the uh, boundaries of the, uh, we'll call the, the Democrat liberal uh, uh, world view, the global view. And the thing is, unfortunately, unfortunately, Asians aren't, aren't within that, that liberal Democrat view. Uh, 
worldview. In other words, that worldview means you have to be, uh, in many cases, you have to con to conform to the European ideal, the European model of things. And if people want to be a vassal, they want to be a slave of the European ideal, then that's their right to do so. You know, I'm not going to quibble that they are, or aren't, or you know, in terms of following what I think. For me, I'm I, I, I'm an individu individual. I'm an individualist. Uh, I don't believe in conforming to any particular group. My theology supports me in that, so my religious practices do the same thing. They're about meditation. They're about uh, my individual relationship with with Christ and with God. And so, I don't want them to force me into their into their thing, and I don't want to force them because, anyways, in my case. Because of free will, you have to choose. It's about loving God. It's not about the, about the force of God in terms of doing what I want and, you know, obeying and so on and so forth. This is about choosing, in terms of free will, uh, your relationship with God. And if, it, you know, you choose not to have a relationship with God, in other words, being atheistic, then that's your choice and you're going to deal with it however, however it turns out to be. Uh, anyways, uh, Things are catching up. I'm getting through uh, uh, through some of the weeds. Uh, there's still some more work to be done, but uh, otherwise, um, I think this is it for now. And uh, I have to uh, make some tea. I gotta make another batch of tea. That's what I'm in the, main, the middle of doing now. And I just set up uh, Yowie Vlogs to begin the uh, YouTube stroll. Mm. Wow, well, it's uh, two forty. 46 in the morning oh, on July 24th it's uh, 2 hours and 46 minutes into the day oh. well I finished the work on the network the network uh, realignment the first part is done I'll leave the second part till I when I come back from my trailer up north uh, uh, sometime in uh, August uh, I finished the the work, the testing out and transferring some of the data over to uh, the new uh, uh, part of the storage system, and that's taking me uh, a better part of a week. <laughs> so, needless to say, my editing has fallen off. Uh, a number of things have fallen off. Uh, so it's. Uh, the progress isn't significant, but in terms of the actual uh, editing, getting the vlog up, but uh, or I should say vlogs, but uh, um, did some uh, listening. I did listen to Lionel the last couple of days. It, 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 it's it's hard to stay <laughs> it's hard to stay positive when you see your world collapsing around you. And this is sort of the situation that he's in. He's watching the world collapse around him. Um, the people in Congress acting in Congress acting like complete clowns. In other words, in the Roman Empire, they had uh, to appease the people. They had bread and circuses. Well, apparently, Congress has become the circus <laughs> that everyone enjoys watching. And they put on a good show sometimes, and. I don't uh, care necessarily the what because they're not ta as he says they're not talking about anything. They don't get to the points. They don't. There are no legal challenges. They don't bring up. Uh, you know they don't have lawyers uh, working to fight for this and fight for that. They they're not asking the right questions. And you know I watch even some of the newspapers who you know the, the, these reporters who are supposedly livid with what's going on in Canada, bringing up the completely wrong. They, they're completely missing the point. And as brilliant as people who think these people are, you bring up that they've, they've completely missed the point, and people who are fans don't understand. They get to say, "Well, why he did a pretty good job? At least somebody's doing, doing some, saying something." But the thing is that that's the mainstream media. The mainstream media really doesn't say much of anything, and he's still sort of just going to get passed over, except for the the fans that he has. But the argument really doesn't make much of an impact. The, 
Because it's not much of an argument. It, 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 what happens is that everyone tries to be conciliatory and never sort of talk about the issue directly because it might offend people. So they make a general statement that hopefully everyone's going to like. Well, the problem is that if you can't be specific, you can't point out where the actual problem is, then you're not going to be able to bring up a solution. You're not going to be part of the solution if there is a solution. A lot of times what happens is, and this is sort of what's happening in the United States now as well, uh, seeing videos on TikTok, not, not in, on, on, um, on Instagram, of people going into stores like Target and something like that. They're just walking out with, with merchandise. Knowing they're not going to be stopped. And this is what's happening. They're, they're, they're stopped. If it's under $1,000, you're not going to get arrested. So there are people who are walking in and taking less than $1,000 worth of stuff and they're just walking out again. And you see, you see these people the video, they're using their phones to record this. They just walk in, take whatever they want, as long as it's under $1,000, and they leave again. And this is, this is going on repeat, but the thing is, is what's happening is people say, well, well, why are our store shelves empty? Why is there a shortage of things? Simple, because the stores aren't going to restock if you keep stealing it. So what happens in these areas, that not only is these stores not, aren't going to be open because they don't have the inventory, but they're not going to be able to reopen again because well, the insurance costs are going to go sky high. This is going to go off, come off of insurance. It's going to push the prices in the supermarkets up. It's going to push the market in any of the stores up. Because all these these so-called these collateral damage, which is basically insurance, your insurance cost, every business pays an insurance cost. Well, those insurance costs are going to go up, and so you will be paying more for what the people have stolen, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse because it's not being stopped, and there is no way. And I think that it's going to stop because the Republicans aren't even pulling up a fight. They're, they're bringing up very silly arguments. They're still arguing over where, over where the where the, the virus started from. Oh, it's, you know, it's Chinese. Well, well, you don't know it's Chinese. Well, you know about that lab in Wuhan. Well, yeah, okay. You know, the main uh, research lab for virology is uh, Fort Detrick, Maryland. Why aren't you pointing fingers at them? Because it came from Wuhan. Well... Fort Dietrich was doing work on it. Go into the history. Go, go to NIH. You'll find that NIH was doing gain-of-function research all over the place. It wasn't just Wuhan, China. It was, all, it, it was literally global. And this is why you have an issue uh, with, this, uh, with the pandemic now of being global because the, the concern is gain-of-function. But they, no one knows how to sit back and say, okay, what, and assess the damage. Very few people know, know how to do, assess the damage. Even other researchers are looking at other researchers who are in virology. They're completely missing it. They're just completely missing the the, the analysis because they're not. They're looking at data someone else get, has given them, and they say, "Oh, well, the you know here's the data." And well, but the thing is, no one's questioning why is the data way the way it is. How do you construct this data? They're not asking the right questions. So of course, uh, when people expect to hear some degree of answer from them, they can't answer. Uh, and the thing is, is that you look at the one thing, you look at you look at the morbidity rate. How many people have died from COVID? And you find that there are very little because you, you, when, you look, when, you, when you look at only those who have died with COVID without any other cofactors, the number is very low. If a person had a heart attack and they had COVID in the system, well, they died from the heart attack, not from COVID. This is the same thing, too, if someone has a stroke, dies from the stroke. They may have COVID in their system, but that's not a COVID death. And I think they, 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 they have even seen in the COVID death report statistics, people who have been shot to death. Well, you know, if it, what, they didn't have COVID in the system, they wouldn't have been shot to death like that. They, they could have lived. <laughs> well, that's not reality. I think as you've got no lawyer standing up, there's no uh, issue in terms of lawyers standing up and saying, hey, these people have been, you know, from th talking about the, 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 the government, the J6, I don't know what they are, why they call them that. But anyways, uh, no one's standing up there, no one uh, 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 providing uh, 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 sort of a free legal team. There is no 
Operation Freedom. There is no uh, Operation. The ACLU is done completely nothing. But the ACLU has been has been com completely useless to begin with. They don't really do much of anything unless there is a very good political cause behind it. And they're particularly left leaning, so they're only going to do stuff that's on the left in terms of their political issues. But otherwise, they just don't do much of anything. They 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 sound great, but they do very little. And the same thing with Amnesty International. I went to these I've, younger days. I went to these uh, protests, and Amnesty International was there. I said, "Hey, let's see what you're doing," and they were doing nothing. They did nothing. Their whole thing was creating a war. Yeah, okay, we know. Things are going on in the world that we know these horrors are going on. We know that there are atrocities going on. We know that there are massacres going on. And that's it. That's all you do is you're creating awareness. I mean, this is it, 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 a lot of these things are just farces. They're, they're pretense. They don't have any degree of reality behind them. And but like this has been going on for a long time now. It's not anything really new. Um. Uh, how do I say what to do? And I said, well, not much. And the thing is, you're not looking for much anyway. Sometimes the, the change that you need is a, is a tiny little influence, a, a shift in attitude. Uh, not just yourself, but other people around you. And as that starts to catch on, that's how a tiny change happens. But it's, you're not going to get any credit for it because uh, no one remembers that you, you began with us anyway. So... <laughs> The point is, is that things change for the for the better. That's all. That's that's your that that's your success. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, I'm gonna leave this here for now. I'm gonna go, I'm sort of off on the weeds right now in terms of my YouTube show. I'm on the uh, I'm working on the uh, Yali vlog subpath, so I'm sort of fixing that up. Anyways, uh, I think that'll be it for now, and uh, I will see you uh, in the next transition period.